Thank you, Tim, and thank you to Share Cafe, and, and thank you for the listeners. Um, please move to slide three. So um, this is a very exciting company. I think it's the most exciting cannabis stock on the ASX. Um, what makes us really so interesting and different from all the other cannabis stocks is that we're the only one that's licensed the strains of cannabis that naturally have less than 0.3% THC. And that's a really important distinction from everybody else because uh, THC is obviously the, a key component to cannabis. It's been grown for generations to try and generate more and more THC within the plant to get that high effect. Um, these strains naturally have less than THC, less than 0.3%, but very, very high levels of, this, of the cannabinoids. And it's the cannabinoids that makes the cannabis plant so interesting from a medicinal point of view. And so we've got all the high levels of CBDA and G and N and B and P and so forth. And these are the ones that the scientific community are very interested in, particularly for treating um, illnesses that are neurologically based. And neurological illnesses are, uh, are very uh, difficult to, to manage. Uh, there's not very good treatments for them. They've got serious side effects. Um, we're talking autism, epilepsy, MS, ADHD, and so forth. So that's the market that we're targeting. We've got this exclusive license with Dolce Can Global. The, the, the plants are actually grown over in New South Wales um, under very strict conditions. And uh, we've actually got a facility as well um, through Canna Pacific that are growing them under license for us so that we've got the quantity that we're going to need to move forward through our clinical trials. So. It's a very exciting uh, potential for using cannabis to treat neurological disorders. And um, moving, oh, and I should also say that we also have the Mente product, which has already been regulatory approved to treat autism in children. Um, that's a device that we're using in combination with, uh, with our unique cannabis strains in our clinical trials. So um, I'm not gonna to touch on too much about Mente in this presentation given the time limit, but uh, let's move to the next slide. So in terms of the company, um, I joined the company in, in about October last year. The share price has performed, um, I think, very well over that time. Um, but we, we're still a very small company with a $35 million market cap. Um, we've got plenty of cash in the bank to execute on our clinical trial program that we're doing right now. And, uh, so, and we've got good backers within the company as well. Next slide. Um, looking at the board, um, starting with myself, obviously I've been in the space for a long time. There's a number of companies that your investors um, would be familiar with that I have uh, either founded or co-founded, ResApp Health, um, Nutritional Growth Solutions um, and uh, Neuroscientific, I both chair. Um, I actually co-founded Oncosol Medical and also Imaging Limited, which I, the latter is now capped about $1.5 billion and I've been chairman of Oz Biotech for a number of years. Uh, promoting the sector in Western Australia. Krista Bates recently joined the board. She's a very experienced legal practitioner. She was head of the medicinal cannabis group at Lab and Legal. Um, most recently, we have appointed Professor Alan Cripps, uh, a very distinguished emeritus professor at Griffith University. And uh, he's been an excellent addition to the board, particularly for his scientific knowledge and research. Uh, Mark Davies of Winton Willisley were with the company for some time, but they've got extensive capital raising and market experience as well. Next slide. So this is a huge industry that's only growing bigger. Um, it's, uh, you know, if you look at the, the number of uh, uh, cannabis stocks on the ASX, they've probably got collectively about a $2 billion market cap now. That's from a standing start only five years ago. Um, if you look at the drugs that are approved for cannabis, there's only four. So it's a very uh, small industry that's growing in terms of the number of potential products that could be used to, to treat uh, various disorders using cannabis. We're very familiar with the opioid market. It's a huge market, uh, but it's actually starting to level off. And there's a problem because of the side effects associated with opioids and the, and the deaths associated as well. Next slide. So we're actually going after neurological disorders with big markets, traumatic brain injury. MS is another big one. We've actually already commenced preclinical studies. We're very advanced in that space. So uh, that's gonna be a major future target for us. And we're showing the uh, the particular effects of our drugs for treating MS, particularly the anti-inflammatory properties that our unique strains of cannabis possess. Epilepsy is another huge market and migraines, but also ASD, also autism spectrum disorder. We've already completed our preclinical pre trial program. I'll get into that in a moment, 
but we've started the phase one, two clinical trial. We can do straight into a phase two effectively because we know that cannabis is safe. There's been no deaths associated with cannabis at all. So this is a safe drug. And therefore, if it shows the efficacy, then you've got a real blockbuster product that can have a massive market because it would be better than the other drugs that are out there that all have significant side effects. Next slide. So uh, as I mentioned before, our strains have unique properties. We actually own the license for all neurological disorders in respect to, to uh, cannabinoids um, and, and this particular strain. So we've got a major market potential here. Um, we express all the, uh, the cannabinoid uh, that you want in terms of the CBD, A and B and so forth. But we also regulate this uh, anti-inflammatory action through the arginase 1, which is a very powerful anti-inflammatory enzyme, and also um, regulating the beta tubulin protein, which is essential for the survival of healthy brain cells. So this is the studies that we've been doing in the preclinical. And, uh, and of course, the fact that we have less than 0.3% THC, which is an important distinction because as far as the regulatory bodies are concerned, if the cannabis has greater than 0.3%, then it's effectively a narcotic. So if you've got less than 0.3%, then as far as they're concerned, you don't have any THC at all. And you certainly don't want drugs that are going to affect people when they get prescribed. That's going to affect their way they can drive or go to work. If they're flying fly at work, it's, or even kids going to school, you don't want to send them off high anyway. So these, this is an important distinction for us from everyone else. Next slide. Um, from our preclinical studies, we compared to CBD alone and our full spectrum NTI strains showed um, a serious uh, impact on the brain cell inflammation, up to 60%, um, and also overall brain cell health and, and viability in the absence of a toxic insult, which is, which is how they do these clinical trials. Um, they actually add a glutamate, which kills cells, and then they see how our drug actually um, improves the cell survival. So we've done all these preclinical trials, and they've been showing us that these have potential for using in neurological disorders. Um, next slide. So we've, um, we've done the in vitro assay assessments. That's been done in partnership with Monash University, RMIT, University of Wollongong. Um, that's what we've done in order to move into the dose formulation, which we've also completed to in order to actually do the phase one, two human safety trial. It's been done at Monash Children's Hospital. It's been led by the Australia's top professor in this space, Associate Professor Michael Fay. It's an open label study. There's 20 patients, so they're all children. It's a 16 week duration. We're probably up to about um, you know, eight or nine weeks into that period. So we'll actually get our results sometime in the fourth quarter, likely going to be you know, October, November, I would suggest. And they're being assessed for, for behavioral changes. That's the important thing. There's a team of, uh, of the clinician psychologists that are reviewing these kids on a weekly basis. And all this will be recorded later in the fourth quarter of this year for when hopefully we get a positive result. Um, we're certainly optimistic of it. And then we can move into our phase three clinical trial. And that will be a complete revaluation of the company once we're into phase three. Um, obviously a much bigger study, but um, it will certainly be able to be able to move into commercialization. Next stage, next slide, please. So why target autism? It's obviously a huge market. The drugs that are used to treat autism, like Ritalin and Concerta, they're not very nice drugs. Um, they have massive sales, but they have serious side effects, appetite loss, dry mouth, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, and so forth. Um, if you can produce a drug like ours that effectively has no side effects, but all the efficacy, then you're gonna be into the blockbuster drug status. And that's what we're aiming for here. Next slide. So in terms of pathways to commercialization, there's a prescription market that's already happening with doctors prescribing cannabis, but the nutraceutical market is obviously another big one. There's regulation going through in federal parliament right now, which is expected to pass um, cannabis to be approved for over-the-counter sale by the end of this calendar year. That will be a tremendous opportunity for us because we have the only natural cannabis that contains less than 0.3% THC. And that's certainly going to be an opportunity for the Blackmores, the Swiss, the Nature Zones that don't presently have any products available in their, in, their, in their product range. They obviously take up a lot of product shelf space because their products are so popular. They definitely want to move into the cannabis space, but they want a natural product, I would imagine, that has no THC or effectively no THC. And then the pharmaceutical market is obviously the big one. That's the one we're really chasing here. 
getting approved to treat autism spectrum disorder and perhaps a whole range of other neurological diseases that we can chase once we show this efficacy in our phase one, two clinical trial. Next slide. So we have tremendous partners. Um, I've mentioned a few of them already. It's tremendous for a little company like ours to be working with such prestigious organizations. It provides legitimacy to the clinical trials that we're doing. And, uh, and it's a terrific partnership that we have with all of them, particularly in terms of my national uh, hospital where we're conducting our clinical trials, University, RMIT, Walter Eliza Hall. They're all great partners for us to have. Next slide. So in terms of news flow, uh, we've already achieved a number of major milestones. Um, we're certainly moving into final results, which are going to happen in the fourth quarter of this year. And then we'll, and then, uh, we're expanding that study in that fourth quarter into a multi-cohort phase three. Um, this is a registration study. That's what we need to do in order to get regulatory approval. And uh, we'll certainly be pursuing that on the back of positive phase two clinical trial results for us. And I might add that we are the only company that's actually doing a clinical trial using these full spectrum cannabis strains to treat autism with 0.3% or less THC. It's the only one in the world. There's a lot of focus on it. We'll create a lot of media attention on it. And I think we'll get a lot of investor satisfaction from positive results. Next slide. And that's really my presentation. I really appreciate your time. I'm happy to answer any questions and, um, and thank you for listening. Thanks, Brian. Um, we've got a couple of questions. We've had a lot of um, additional cannabis companies on recently. There's obviously a lot more awareness um, in, in the markets. Can you, can you explain why, um, how many companies are working in the area of autism and, and why is that such a focus uh, as a starting point? Um, well, I think that's probably the most popular focus. There's a number of reasons, primarily because autism is such a poorly met disorder. And anybody who knows anybody, you know, the family that has autistic children knows how hard it is to manage a kid with autism. The drugs that are currently approved are not very effective and have those serious side effects. So there's no shortage of people or kids that want to enroll in this study. Um, we enrolled 20 kids in our study and we probably could have enrolled 50 if we wanted. We could have done that in a flash because there was so much interest in participation. So obviously when you do a clinical trial, you wanna be able to recruit quickly and autism is a space that you can certainly do that. And, and we've got a, uh, an analyst online here. So G GW Pharmaceuticals, which as you know, is the kind of market leader in, in research and has a cannabinoid uh, in phase two trials for autism. How, how do you get around them? Are they, are they competitive, uh, a competitor or do they help open the market for you? Um, look, obviously they're a lot bigger than we are. Um, we certainly look to emulate their path in terms, of, um, in terms of market cap. But, you know, they have a product but that doesn't have natural less than 0.3% THC. We're talking about synthetic cannabinoids here. And, and if you have to extract the THC from your cannabis plant, you're effectively messing with the cannabinoids within, and you don't want to do that. And so um, you, you're not going to get a product, I don't think, approved by any regulatory body that has greater than 0.3% THC in it for any kids. You just don't want to have kids going to school stoned. So they need to extract the THC out, which makes it a synthetic. Um, it's not a natural product like ours. So I think that, that uh, we have a superior product to them and anybody else that's pursuing neurological disorders using cannabis. And when you talk about the THC level, is that specifically because you, you're talking about autism and that level has to be at a certain uh, defined point? Well, if it's greater than 0.3%, it's a narcotic. And that's presently illegal in most countries around the world. So you've got that barrier to entry straight away. And um, we don't have that barrier to entry because any regulatory body looking at our clinical trials will automatically discount the fact that it has less than 0.3% THC. So by their standards, that means it has no THC. So from that basis, we're already completely differentiated from everybody else. But they all know that, which is the reason why they have to try and remove the THC, which is naturally present within the cannabis plant. And doing so as a chemical extraction, it's not easy to do, it's expensive, and you also don't end up with a natural product. And I think uh, particularly if you're after the over-the-counter market, you definitely, those big companies that I mentioned like Blackmores, they don't want, I don't think, to want to be out of putting out a synthetic cannabis product to their consumers. They want a natural product and that's the only one that we can provide them with. 
And, and just finally, Brian, um, what's the timeline to commercialisation? Well, we're, we're going to complete the phase two clinical trials this year. The phase three is a much bigger trial. It'll be at least 200 kids, I would imagine, in that study. Probably going to take longer to recruit, you know, call it maybe six months with a 12-month study, so 18 months. We could effectively be at the end of this calendar year, 18 months away from submitting for regulatory approval for the world's first um, cannabis product to treat autism um, in with less than 0.3% THC. And that is going to be a tremendous market. And by the way, by the time we get there, we would have already been moving into other clinical trials to treat other neurological disorders. So we'll have a multifaceted company. And uh, I think that'll be very interesting for investors across Australia and perhaps globally.